So one of the things as runners that we're so often told is that we're not using our glutes sufficiently as we're running. I've got lazy butt muscles, weak glutes, and we need to start doing a little bit more in terms of strengthening and consciously thinking about how we're running to actually begin to use them appropriately, use them properly. Great, but how do we know? How do we know as runners whether we're actually using our glutes or not, whether we're making progress with this or not? Short of having a physio watching you run and testing you on a regular basis, which isn't realistic, how can we actually tell? And there are five warning signs that I want to go through today to actually help you get a bit of a sense for whether you're managing to use those glutes or more importantly, what to look out for when you're not using them. Okay, so let's get straight into the first one. The first one is a tendency as we're running to see this typical hip drop sign. The drop down to one side as we're landing on, in this case, the left leg is our stance leg. So we're here, instead of keeping a nice level pelvis, if I was looking at myself running from behind, I'd see this little drop down to the opposite side. Obviously, it's hard to see yourself running in that respect, but if you do see any race pictures, any race footage, anybody who's taking any video, you could even get your other half or friend or whoever to take a quick video of your, as you're running, just to get an impression for how stable and how level you're managing to keep those hips. If you've got one side or both sides that are dropping from side to side as you land and load on that leg, it's pretty indicative that glute med, so the muscle around the outside of those glutes, the one that's really responsible for lateral stability, pelvis on standing hip, isn't doing enough to provide that lateral stability. So if he's doing his job, you'll be able to stand on one leg and keep a nice level pelvis. If not, we're gonna see that hip drop sign. So that's the first thing I want you to look out for. The second is less about glute med, although glute med is involved here, more about glute max. Okay, so a combination of the two, most people think about as we're standing on one leg and we see this drop in to the midline here with this knee, this kind of inwards collapse, this knee valgus position as we call it. Most people, well a lot of people will see that as an out and out glute med issue. Again, not controlling adduction of the hip very well. But upper fibers of glute max also really work to control um, internal rotation. And it's that internal rotation that we also need to consider when it comes to that drop into the midline. So if you see yourself running, again, you see that knee driving into the mid that midline, if we see a, a, a race pick, or you feel your knees kind of brushing together, then that's again, another surefire sign that your glutes, combination of glute med and glute max, aren't doing enough of a job to be able to control the position of that standing leg. Now, of course, there are other factors at play here, Okay, we could be looking at uh, a, a slight kind of variation in terms of how your hips are actually put together. So if you're somewhat antiverted at the hip, okay, so we're talking about how the kind of the, the, the neck of the hip and the, the head of the hip, the, sorry, the neck of the femur and the head of the femur are, um, are aligned in rotation, then that can predispose you to being more likely to drop the knee inwards towards the midline. But, those cases are definitely less common than those who are just straight up weak and or poor at controlling the motion at the hip. So don't worry too much about the, the out and out reasoning. Just know that you need to start focusing on exercises which will strengthen you in the other direction. So if it's internal rotation and adduction that's causing this drop in towards the midline, we need to work on external rotation and abduction so lots of our typical glute exercises that we always see people doing, things like our kind of crab walk exercise with a resistance band between your legs, those sorts of things, it'll certainly, certainly help. Now from there, another surefire sign that you're starting to, again, find kind of compensa compensation strategies to get away with not using your glutes adequately as you're running, particularly in this instance, glute max, the big one of those butt muscles, is that as a kind of a common pattern as you're running, or as you're training week by week, you know that for you, the tendency is you get quite tight through your calves. 
if your calf muscles feel like they're doing the majority of the, the heavy lifting, as it were, <laughs> with your mileage, be it long runs, be it speed sessions, tempo workouts, whatever, if that's the area that you're getting disproportionate aches and pains, chances are that you're either doing something with foot strike and you're right up on your toes, which again, you'd know, it's, it's, for most it's probably not that. Chances are actually you're overworking those calves as one of the main muscles for you to push off with rather than using some of the big muscles that should be creating that drive into extension, your glutes, your hamstrings. If you're inhibited through perhaps tightness through your hip flexors and not able therefore to really drive from glute max into extension, give yourself a good push off with each stride, then it's not like your body's suddenly not gonna be able to run. Instead, your body's gonna find a different way of achieving the outcome it's after. So think about the sheer bulk of these guys and these guys, the muscles that should be driving us off onto the next, the next stride in comparison to the bulk of our plantar flexor unit. So our, our calf muscles, gastrocnemius and soleus. Those guys, they're more about transmitting power that should be emanating from higher up down into the ground. They're not about actually creating that big, strong push off. Now the problem is they can, they can try, but they'll get overwhelmed, they'll get overworked. And a muscle that gets overworked ends up getting tight. So in lieu of the, pain, the, the, the power coming from up above, from those powerful glutes and hamstrings, you end up just in a position where your calves just do too much, too often. Worst case scenario, you end up with recurring calf strains, perhaps even Achilles problems. Likely scenario prior to that, is this kind of constant chronic tightness that even stretching on a regular basis doesn't do a great job of getting rid of. It more so just kind of manages the situation, but it becomes this ongoing frustrating thing that as I run, my calves get tight, I run more, my calves just continuously stay tight up to the point where something goes twang. That's not what I want from you. So instead of con constantly stretching your calves, I want you to work through various different routines. Again, we've got some on this channel, which will help you start to loosen up the areas that are inhibiting your glutes and start strengthening your glutes, activating your glutes prior to running and actually getting those big powerful muscles ready to do the job they're meant to do. Creating these, or, you know, creating strategies to fix these imbalances on doing these imbalances and really focusing on a lot of these fundamentals is a big part of what I do in the Bulletproof Runners Program for our members. And it really is where we start with the foundation workouts. To start from scratch and building back up a good state where you're not dealing with these common imbalances and then you can start building strength on top of that kind of, that kind of base, level, base level of foundation. Now, the last area that I really want you to think about is a combination of tightness through your lower back and or tightness through your hamstrings. Okay, so you'll see there's a bit of a pattern here. When we're not using our glutes properly, there's effort that gets applied in the wrong places. So again, if we're not able to maintain a nice controlled pelvic position as we're running. So instead of just a little bit of gentle movement as we go from stride to stride, we see this big anterior, anterior tilt, this forward arch of the lower back, then yes, it's gonna make it difficult to, for you to be able to use your glutes, stride to stride, you know, to push off, but it's also gonna put those, those muscles like quadratus lumborum, QL, in a position where over time, they're just held in this shortened position for too long and they will start to get tight. And that's just thinking simply from a back and forth perspective. If we come back right to the top and think about our side to side, our hip drop, we speak about glute med being weak on this side, but as we drop from here to here, it puts more strain through QL on this side, quadratus lumborum on this side. And instead of glute med being able to hold the pelvis up, QL ends up having to work harder to lift the pelvis on this side, which means that if you've got a tendency to drop the hip on the right or drop the hip from the right, because you're weak on the right, to the left, left side QL ends up working a bit harder. So if you've got kind of both sided 
lower back tightness, lower back pain, then it might be that you're just not great at controlling the pelvis in that back and forth movement. But if it's one-sided when you're running, take a look for that hip drop. Because if you've got that hip drop going on, it might well be that lower back tightness is all part and parcel of weakness on the other side through your glutes. Hopefully that, that makes a bit of sense. The same kind of logic applies when we're talking about our hamstrings. Now, when we're trying to drive off, this is a similar conversation to the calves, drive off onto the next stride. We want that power coming from, like I said, glutes, hamstrings to be able to push you off. But in the same way that when these guys aren't doing a good job, those calves take up a bit of the, the extra effort. If your glutes aren't doing enough to push you into hip extension, those hamstrings, again, will try and pick up a little bit of the slack. So if you're finding after a, a tempo workout, a hill session, a speed workout, particularly those kind of higher intensity sessions, that the next day you wake up and you're, you're thinking, wow, my, my hamstrings have done quite a lot here, then that's a surefire sign that, uh, and sorry, it's, it's not just if your hamstrings have done quite a lot, it's if your hamstrings have done a lot and you're not feeling any post-exercise kind of soreness, any DOMS in your glutes, if it's all hamstring and no glutes at all, that's probably telling you something. That's telling you that there's been a lot of work done here, not a lot of work done here. Ideally, after a good hill session or something along those lines, you'll feel that, yeah, I, I definitely use those glutes as well as I definitely use those hamstrings. So there'll be a, a nice kind of sharing of the load there. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that helps. What I would suggest is you go and check out a simple little routine. It's a five minute routine you can do before your next run to help you actually switch on your glutes. Because if any of these various different aspects resonated with you and you're thinking, yeah, that sounds like me, then the exercises in this little routine will help to get those glutes actually working before your next run. So go and check that out next and I'll see you right over there.